Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Johnny Gerdeman here as always with Tom or Tom. How's it going? Tony, we're here to preview a big weekend of football games starting on Friday. Tony, let's start with the Granville High School Blue Aces in the state final four facing Hamilton Baden, I believe. Tony, who you got? Well, I have some Badens in my family, so mm. uh, but no Hamiltons. So I know mm. you being a, a Granville person, I, and also many famous people from Granville, including like I, William Shakespeare or some other names that you're going to drop on me, dropping a bunch on Tuesday night. Granville, the birthplace of so many people, not the birthplace of you. You're an East Coast, no. you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I was going to say something derogatory, but East Coast is derogatory <laughs> enough. I am going to go Granville. What is the line on that game, Tom? You know, Tony, I have not been able to get with my um, high school football bookie to get a line or over under on that. And that's on me. I will uh, try and do it. You know, I always like to try and get in early on the week because before the line moves, before the public has a chance to weigh in on these high school football games. We're, we're kidding in case you're wondering if Tony and I have serious, serious gambling issues. No, 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 no. We're good. We're just kidding. We're kidding. So go Blue Aces. Okay, let's talk some college football. <laughs> let's talk about the Friday game. One thirty kickoff. Number 16, Iowa, 9-2 and two on the season, 6-2 and two in Big Ten play against Nebraska. 3-8 and eight Nebraska, 1-7. and seven. Really got the, the short shrift last week on the last pass into the end zone. Should have been a pass interference. Yet another one-score loss for Nebraska. Iowa only favored by one and a half this one in, in this one, over under 41. I am calling, Tom, outright win. For Nebraska, although Adrian Martinez is out, I'm going to change that. I did see Adrian Martinez was out. That makes me think like the Vegas, does Vegas realize that? Because it feels like with Adrian Martinez out, I assume it's going to be Logan Smothers is going to be the guy. I, I feel terrible. I, I feel like with Adrian Martinez, this is a win. This may be another heartbreaking loss for Nebraska. And it's like, well, if we would have had our starter in there, but this also maybe gives them a chance. This is like their bowl game Mm -hmm. we're gonna see what we're gonna look like next year and i wanted to pick nebraska and then i just remember remembered uh, adrian martinez i'm still gonna pick him how do you like that yeah i mean this is one that i think we've been talking about for quite a while with you know like nebraska is going to get someone this year and nebraska is officially running out of someone's to get this year because they have been so close in every single one of their losses i think i saw they were in sp plus there's something like 27th or something it's like they're like one of the one of the best three win teams in the history of uh, college football, basically, which is uh, not exactly something you print T-shirts for, but still, I guess it's somewhat comforting. But yeah, I, all year long, it's felt like, man, they are going to get someone and I bet they get Nebraska, get Iowa at home on Black Friday. And yeah, I'm right there with you. I mean, Mark, I, I feel like there's a reason Logan Smothers hasn't played. Like I have no strong Logan Smothers opinions because I haven't really seen Logan Smothers. But it feels like if, you know, if there was a better option than Adrian Martinez, Scott Frost would have used it by now. So, yeah, I, that that concerns me a little bit. But, yeah, the line only being one and a half, that's weird. I mean, I know Iowa doesn't put up a lot of points, but they're pretty well coached. They're pretty disciplined and ugh, talking myself into Iowa. All right. I'm not. This is this is like you don't ever want to be the guy who's picking against Alabama and taking a ton of points because well it's so many points and then you're just watching Alabama it's like oh why did I do this to myself like what does Iowa do Iowa do is disciplined doesn't make mistakes what does Nebraska do look at me twirl my gun ow my foot I shot it again son of a gun for the how do I keep doing this like it, uh, Nebraska will find a way to lose this game I'm deeply disappointed. I feel so bad for Nebraska fans. Like this has just been such a bummer of a season, but they just, yeah. I mean, when in doubt, assume Iowa is going to pull out some nonsense and win and when in doubt, assume that Nebraska is going to pull out some nonsense and lose. So yeah, I guess Iowa wins. One of the crazier stats, Nebraska has won just one big 10 game this year. They're one and seven in big 10 play. (laughs) They have outscored big 10 opponents like by seven points. Even better, they have a better score margin at one and seven. They have a better score margin in Big Ten play than six and two Michigan State does. Michigan State, because Michigan State just got their heads caved in by Ohio State. Michigan State is plus six in scoring margin this year in Big Ten games. Nebraska at one and seven is plus seven. Like that is, 
I, I, I looked at that and I'm like, that can't be right. And I went and looked at it up. I was like, uh-huh. Yep. That's right. What a bizarre season. And I know I, I always with Scott Frost and all of these close games. And I always, my theory is close games are a product of the, the close losses are a product of the coaching, but I can't blame him on all of this. And that's why I keep going back to, there's some sort of a, a curse going on or whatever. There's, I think there's enough reason to, I, I don't have a problem with him coming back at this point because this, some, somebody needs to solve this. Like there needs to be an investigation. I don't know if CIA, NSA, Interpol, like MI5, MI6, MI7, not MS13, but somebody needs to figure this out, what's going on in Nebraska. And you just feel terrible for everybody. And you hope, you just want to send, like, the the, the program should just be, a, uh, like, the, the game program should just be a sympathy card for the entire team. Like, you know, sorry for your losses, thinking about you. Yeah, that it, it's at some point this has to come around like this. Is, you have to have a little bit of regression of, to the mean at some point. But yeah, it is just it is remarkable. I do like your uh, your man of science position like, well, it must be a curse of some kind. I don't know. My we hang on. Let me consult my Ouija board on what's wrong with Nebraska football. Uh, next up, 3.30 p.m., number four, Cincinnati on the road at East Carolina all week long. I've been saying, watch out, watch out. I, I'm not saying Cincinnati's going to win. I'm just saying everyone's going well. Now Cincinnati just has to beat Houston in the AAC championship game. Not so fast, my friend. That's a that that's something I say sometimes. Uh, should put a pirate head on right now. Just just I'm not I'm not saying Cincinnati's going to lose. I'm saying this could be a very uncomfortable afternoon for Cincinnati. They're number four now. Everyone's fat and happy in Cincinnati. Everyone's all full of chili. Like mm, watch out. Don't don't take East Carolina lightly. I, I one last thing on Nebraska in science. I do. I wonder <laughs> if a phrenologist has actually maybe studied Scott Frost's head and, and seen if there's issues there. Also, if they can't find anything there, I would suggest just bleeding him and, and seeing if that works. And now let's be, get back to Cincinnati and East Carolina. Cincinnati in the position right now, win, and you have a really, really good chance of being in. That's something that no team in the group of five has ever felt before. So how much pressure are they feeling from that? Or is it, is it a, is it relief or is it pressure? This is what they've wanted and it's there for them. They thought they weren't, I mean, two or three weeks ago, it looked like, well, no, you're not going to be part of this. You can't have it. But now it's like, well, it's right here. Mm-hmm. We, we, we can has it. Let's just go get it. And is that, is that too much pressure for them? Or with, with Luke Fickle, I wouldn't be surprised if they just completely, completely lock in mm-hmm. because every, I mean, they've been, this was something they had eyed since January. I mean, they knew the schedule was coming. They knew they believed it would be enough. I think they're going to be locked in Tom. Of course you'd say that you have the brain pan of a stage coach tilter. Uh, no, that's a, uh, yeah, I, I think that's entirely possible because this is, they have had this in mind all year. Like, if everything goes right, we can make the college football playoff. We can be the team that you know, the team that the haters, you know, the haters can't deny our team. And it, it's all falling into place for them right now. And they just need to finish the, you know, they just need to finish the drill now. It's just, I, I think that, you know, there's a, there's a possibility they come out and really just blow the next two teams away. But I, it just feels like they have one more like yeah, game in, in them. And there's, I think you, you, you know, Tuesday night you had this, then you go into Thanksgiving and then you get to travel to, to Greenville. And it's just, just something about this game just stinks to me that you, you know, you, you probably had a big celebration Tuesday night, you know, and, and then you got the holiday, you got a short week anyway. Like it's just, and East Carolina is not fantastic this year, but they're kind of coming along. They're a better team now than they were at the beginning, at the beginning of the year. Just say, say and watch out. That's all just say and watch out. I wonder if being on the road allows them to lock in even more as opposed to being distracted at home, but uh, that's going to be a tricky one. Saturday's game, Tom, let's touch quickly on Ohio State, Michigan, Ohio State, an eight-point favorite, over under 64 and a half. If you guys want us to talk, uh, hear us talk about this one, you can check out yesterday's show. We spent uh, over half an hour breaking this one down offensively, defensively. We did not touch on special teams, Tom, which I think Michigan has a pretty good advantage or 
they have an advantage over most teams and then they take advantage of that one uh, generally. And maybe that's something we, we should have spent more time on, but we ran out of time. So keep an eye on that one. If, if that's uh, we'll have, we'll be doing a Friday stream. We'll be able to talk about it there as well. I, um, I feel like we, we, we said, and this is a little bit low of a line. I, I'm going ahead, going ahead and uh, I'll lay those points. I don't know how I feel about the, the over under 64 and a half. My prediction was 45, 24. So I guess I'm going to go over Tom. Look at your score prediction. You 40, went, I, uh, I, yeah, I went 42, 28, which would get you to 70. So over there as well, but you know, if it's 38, 28, would that shock me at all? No. I mean, that, that was, I was kind of going between 38, 28 and 42, 28. So yeah, I mean, over, but not a ton over, but you know, I mean, there, there is a way that this gets real out of hand for Michigan. And there's a way that this goes right down to the wire. And it's just, I feel like by the middle of the second quarter, you're going to know what kind of game this is. You're going to know if this is a four quarter mm-hmm. game or not. And, and even if it's a seven point game at half, Ohio State still has that explosion that can still cover and give us either of the scores that we were suggesting. Well, let's move to a bigger game, Tom. Also a 12 p.m. kick. Uh, Maryland and Rutgers, both five and six overall, two and six in conference, playing for a bowl berth. Rutgers, how dare these dirty dogs in, in Vegas and offshore making Maryland a one and a half point favorite in this game. Uh, Rutgers got shut out what last week against Penn state or so, and, and mm-hmm. really did not look good. Maryland did not look good against Michigan, but they have more offensive capabilities. I really, really want to take Rutgers here, but that one and a half is kind of concerning to me, but you know, not knowing anything about Rutgers, what has gone, gone, gone on in the last few weeks, I don't know who is healthy, who is playing. I couldn't name their quarterback right now because I think Art, Art Sitkowski, I believe, is it, in it, Illinois. He's in Illinois, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to give you an idea, like I, it's, I, Rutgers has not been on my radar and, and certainly mm-hmm. not on the show's radar for a while, but I still have you know, something in my heart for them. would like to see them do well. And I, I'm taking Rutgers, but I feel like I'm wrong. This is this is a tell me how many turnovers Tolia Tungavaloa has, and I will tell you how this game goes. Because Mar- Maryland can score much more easily than Rutgers can in this game, but Maryland is also a mistake prone team that just constantly blows its own mm-hmm. foot off. I mean, it's it's basically East Coast Nebraska more or less, and you know if they're turning the ball over three times and give Rutgers has short fields and can convert some of those, maybe they can sort of strangle them twenty to seventeen or. 17 to 16 or something. But other than that, it just, I don't know that Rutgers has enough offense, but you know, again, the flip, the flip side of that is, man, I bet this is a huge game for Greg Schiano and his program. Like this is a, I, this is, this is probably one they've had circled on their calendar for months and months and months. And, you know, if you could get to a bowl in your second year at Rutgers, I mean, that would be monumental. I, I never know what to make of Maryland's program. Like it just, it, you know, they start off the season great every year and then they just go straight in the toilet. You wonder, is this a like, mm, I think we're ready to not be playing football for a little while. Like if they've kind of hit that point. So that's probably, you know, number of turnovers and mentality of Maryland are kind of the two things that to me determine this game. Cause Mar- Rutgers is going to want this one real, real, real bad. Move to the three thirty kick of the iron Bowl, Number three, Alabama 10 and one on the season. Against Auburn, six and five, losing last week to uh, South Carolina. I believe is that correct? Yes, at South Carolina. I feel like if Bo Nix was playing in this game, I'd just go ahead and take Auburn. Like, mm-hmm. just let's just see what happens. It's a tricky place to play. Obviously, it's a big rivalry. Some think down in the south and, and one portion of the of the south where people like that game. But without Bo Nix, TJ Friendly, he started last week again, uh, lost twenty one seventeen. 19 and a half point line. I don't even know if I feel any way about that. Like I, there's very little expectation that Auburn is going to be able to mount anything. And you're talking about teams that have are ready for the season to end. I mm-hmm. think Auburn might be there right now as well. Alabama may be a little angry about moving down to number three. I, I wouldn't 
mess with the line. I think Alabama is going to win probably by more than three touchdowns, but uh, I, I just don't think Auburn can put up a fight and I, they're going to give back too many yards and too many points. I think with their own offense. Yeah, this, this is too many points for this game, especially on the road in Auburn, but also Auburn's not in a great spot right now. I mean, uh, Brian Harson is, uh, he has the uh, whole uh, Nick Rolovich syndrome going on right now where it's like, mm, how confident are you he's going to have his job in the next uh, month or so when a vaccine mandate goes into place? Because I think, you know, and that that was a we- a little bit of a weird hire at the time going from Boise, Idaho to Auburn, Alabama. Like that's not necessarily a great cultural fit to begin with. You know, that may, that may be a, a thing where it's just like, mm, we are kind of done here. But, it, you know, this is a game that traditionally Auburn in Auburn always gives Alabama a better run than you'd expect. So I would just based on that history, I would take those points. But I'm not I'm not particularly confident in it, especially with Nick Saban having uh, look at them. They don't even believe in you and the college football playoff rankings to point to. And uh, yeah, that that I think I think Alabama moving down to three is about the worst thing that could happen to Auburn this week. <laughs> Uh, let's go to the, the arguably the biggest trophy game in the Big Ten. The most beautiful trophy game, to be certain. The land-grant trophy between Penn State and number 12, Michigan State. Penn State 7-4 and four in the season, 4-4 four and four in conference play. Michigan State 9-2 and two overall, 6-2 and two in conference play. I was pretty shocked when I saw Penn State was a one-point favorite in this one. That is, imagine the, the disrespect that Mark D'Antonio <laughs> would be spouting for that one. Uh, Penn State feeling good, just were able to secure James Franklin for another 10 years, kept him away. You know, USC was calling. Florida wanted him. Georgia would have fired their own coach. Auburn's going to be coming open. Miami, like everybody, everybody wanted uh, James Franklin. Penn State said, no, you're staying with us. Sign him to the extension. They got to be feeling good about that. Uh, still, it's, this is an odd line, and it's something that makes me take notice. I, I wonder where the, I was gonna say, I wonder where the scoring is gonna come from from Penn State. But Sean Clifford, we know he can do that, and Jahan Dotson. I just their lack of running game always concerns me. And, and Michigan State, how healthy is Kenneth Walker? Like I'm, I'm, I'm confused by this line. I feel like it should be Michigan State minus three or something like that. Like, this n- number twelve team in the nation, yeah. They were beaten by somebody a lot better, and I guess maybe maybe if you're looking at common opponents, Penn mm-hmm. State should be favored by like seven or something like that. If mm-hmm. you're going to judge this off of what happened against Ohio State, yeah, I just again, this is a little bit of a mentality game. What's Michigan State feeling like this week after coming off of that game? You know, I mean, I guess Penn State's feeling good that James Franklin's sticking around. I mean, I guess people think that's a good thing. I guess. I mean, it's just like Penn State now just kind of is what it is for the foreseeable future. And, uh, you know, the foreseeable future really based on how that contract is structured is three years, three years. And then the buyout drops to basically nothing. So, you know, it's a 10 year contract Air quotes, 10 year contract. It's a three year contract and you might stick around after that. We'll see. You know, I'm, I'm with you. Michigan state plus one is Kenneth Walker healthy. Can he, you know, he, he was compromised last week. Ankle injuries generally will take a couple of weeks to really heal all the way. So, you know, is he 100% this week? Probably not. How well are they going to be able to run the ball against Penn State? Ohio State couldn't really run the ball particularly well against Penn State. So that, you know, that may be tricky, especially with a compromised Kenneth Walker. The under here, 51 and a half, like, you know, do you see Penn State like lighting up the scoreboard? Do you think, do you think Penn State gets into the 30s? I don't necessarily see that. This feels like a 28 20 game or something like that, you know? I mean, I was going to say 28 24 seems a little high. Yeah. And and 28 24 would just barely get you over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and and there's a real possibility that this one is 20 to 17 too. So, yeah, 51 and a half seems kind of high to me. But yeah, this, I mean, this is, this is one of these games where it's like you're going to find out a lot about the program culture because both of these teams are having, you know, would have turned into somewhat disappointing seasons based on the expectations they may have had a month or so ago. Let's, let's find out, you know, let's, let's find out about these two coaches that everyone wants to give a hundred million dollars to like, which, which, uh, which one of them can actually get their team to want to play in a game that probably doesn't mean as much as they were hoping it would. Yeah. 
let's uh, keep it in the Big Ten. Go to the 4 p.m. kickoff for uh, what, the Paul Bunyan Axe. Correct. N- number 14, Wisconsin, 8-3 and three on the season, 6-2 and two in Big Ten play uh, at Minnesota, 7-4 and four on the season, 5-3 and three in Big Ten play. Wisconsin favored by 7. The over-under on, uh, is 39. We know Braylon Allen has taken off as Wisconsin's running back and has been exactly what you would expect a out of the blue Wisconsin running back to be. And it's something they've missed since Jonathan Taylor left. They didn't have it last year. Uh, Minnesota's running run defense, not spectacular has been okay at times. It it feels like the Wisconsin train is just going to keep going and not that this is going to be a big win, but you know, like 24, 10, like Minnesota, what does Minnesota's offense do against Wisconsin's defense? Do, Do they score 10? Yeah, and Minnesota has had just a weird season this year. Yeah. They opened with a you know pretty respectable loss to Ohio State week one. Then they play Miami of Ohio and win by five. And then they go on the road and beat Colorado by 30. It's like, oh, okay, well, so they're, they're better than they, oh, they just lost to Bowling Green at home. Like, what? What? They went at Purdue 20 to 13, which has aged pretty well. Beat Nebraska by a touchdown. Beat Maryland by 18. That's a good, decent win. Win at Nebraska, 41-14. Okay, hey, they've got it rolling. Hey, they're they're back in the Big Ten title race. Oh, dear Lord, they just lost at home to Illinois, 14-6. to What? Then they lose at Iowa, 27-22, which is, I mean, that's not a bad loss. That's a pretty respectable showing. Win at Indiana last week, 35-14. I just, th- there's nothing on there that suggests to me this is a team that's about to beat a team that is really rounding into form. And, you know, seven points. Uh, you know, giving seven points for for Wisconsin seems pretty low because I, you know, the, the best teams they've played this year, Ohio State, they scored 31. This is, you know, that that is not, I don't think they're scoring 31 if they play Ohio State right now. They play, scored 20 against Purdue. They scored 30 against Nebraska, 22 against Iowa. I just, and and I, I think there's an argument to be made that Wisconsin has a better defense than all of those teams. Wisconsin's playing for a Big Ten championship game appearance. I, I think I'd lay the points for Wisconsin here. You know, I, and again, I don't think this is this is a huge game, but you know, if, if this game is twenty-four to seven, would that remotely surprise you? Not even a little. In fact, I would probably lean towards the the under on this one. This feels like it's going to be ugly and dominant, and just how much hope does Minnesota really have throughout? I don't, I don't expect much offense from the Gophers. Tom, let's move to our final game. It's Bedlam, 7.30 p.m. kick. I assume this is Fox, but I could be absolutely wrong on that one. I did not write the TV uh, TV the networks down, but number 10, Oklahoma. At number seven, Oklahoma State, both teams 10-1 and one on the season, 7-1 and one in conference play. The Pokes are a four-point favorite. Over under pretty low for Bedlam, 49 to five, or 49.5. Feels like this is... This is not your typical Big 12 offensive year. Oklahoma mm-hmm. is down. Oklahoma State's offense is down. There's defenses being, I don't know, I don't want to say defense is being played. Oklahoma State is playing defense, and, and maybe Baylor with Dave Aranda, you would expect that Dave Aranda probably going to move somewhere else after this year with all these jobs and the SEC being open and him, him being somebody that is coveted. But Oklahoma State, I just feel like their defense is going to contain Oklahoma. We saw Oklahoma struggle last week. I don't think things are going to get any easier for them. Caleb Williams is up and down. They throw Spencer Rattler in there and, and see what happens. And really, there's lack of there's a lack of identity. We knew that reliance on a freshman quarterback isn't always the wisest thing, but Oklahoma's running game is is iffy. The passing game is, is iffy. Like, what are they right now? And right now, I don't I don't know that they're anything. And that's the least. Uh, that, that's exactly what you don't want to be when you're facing a a good defense in Oklahoma state. Now their one hope is that this is just, this is bedlam. This is a rivalry. Anything can happen, but I like Oklahoma state in this one and, and, and to cover. And this game is on ABC uh, in prime time. Uh, would you like to guess what the Fox primetime game is? It's not is what we've it, talked about. Is it a PAC 12 game? It is a PAC 12 game. Is it uh is it Oregon, Oregon state or is it uh Nope. Nope. <laughs> UCLA and somebody? I, don't, I have no idea. Nope. Nope. Is it the Apple Cup? Nope. No. Tell me, Tom. The old Notre Dame fighting Irish going to play Stanford. one in 74 Stanford. Oh, boy. That's going to be a humdinger of a football game. Can't wait. Uh, yeah. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State is, 
you know, if Oklahoma wins, they're going to have to play Oklahoma State again the week after that. If Oklahoma State wins, they play Baylor in the Big 12 championship game. I don't think, you know, if Oklahoma wins this game, they're not winning. They're not beating Oklahoma State twice in a row. This just this just feels like shaky offense going up against a good defense on the road at night. Like I know Oklahoma State never wins this game, and I'm going to be I'm going to be uh, Charlie Brown going to kick the football again. Definitely, this is the year Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma for the third time since I don't know, like 1913 or something. It's been they're like it's basically been the Ohio State Michigan series for the last you know 15 16 years where I think Oklahoma State's beaten them twice since 2004 or something like that. So. It is, it never, ever, ever goes right for Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State, but, but Tony, I think this is the year it goes right for Oklahoma State and, you know, 49 and a half for a big 12 game is like mind blowingly low. I'm going to say Oklahoma State, give the four plus the under there 49 yeah. and a half. Like, I mean, it, uh, this just, this just feels like, you know, unless Oklahoma State's defense caches a bunch of pick sixes or something like that. This just feels like 24 to 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was thinking like 27, 13, 24, 14, something like mm-hmm. comfortable, ugly, and well under the under. Like you look at Oklahoma, that they rush for a couple hundred yards against TCU and Kansas, and then they down to 72 yards against uh, Texas Tech, 82 yards two weeks ago against Baylor, then back up to 204 against Iowa State. I can't trust you. And I don't <laughs> expect them to rush for 204 yards or maybe even a hundred yards in this one against Oklahoma state. So I'm with you on that one, Tom, anything else about the weekend before we go that we haven't touched on? I will just give a little plug for grambling and Southern. That's 5. PM on NBC sports network. That is the uh, Bayou classic. It is one of the biggest games of the year in uh, HBCUs. It is always, uh, always a really fun game. Always. I mean, just, it's like the pageantry there. That's one of those, like, I have that on my list to go see that Mm -hmm. game at some point. Cause it's just like, it's a really cool, unique game. So that's uh, that's one. Just you know, if you have a multiple TV setup, like throw that on one of them. NBC NBC Sports Network, five PM. Absolutely, thank you for that, Tom. That will do it for this weekend preview. I want to thank you all for tuning in. It is about to be wild on Saturday, so I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I know you are. And for those who can't look forward to it because you're just so wrapped up in nerves, we're here for you. So I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And we will talk to you guys later.